In this video, I'm gonna talk about five signs that your intelligence and smarts and success is actually preventing men from pursuing you. Number one, if you're around weak, scared, and invalidated men, then it certainly is possible that your smarts and success are intimidating these guys. It is absolutely true that some of you have been judged by men and basically threatened men because you're really educated, you may be really successful in your career, you may make more money than the average man, and you just have all of those qualities that some guys are threatened by. So I completely affirm that that's absolutely true in some instances, but there's really no point for me just to kind of, you know, pat you on the back and say, yeah, that's true. Sorry. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what else to offer you. So in the most, the rest of this video, I, I want to talk about the things that you can actually do that affect you in a positive way. And the first thing is that you have to be around the right guys. And of course that is a part of the men's choice, you know, we just are affected by the culture and the people that just kind of end up being around us. But whenever possible, you also have to recognize that this is a character issue in the men that you are around. Because I will say this, this is only an issue for weak, invalidated men who are already having issues with their identity. The point I'm making here is that a strong, godly man is not going to be threatened by those things that you may feel like men are threatened by. So in the next four points, what I really want to talk about are some other possibilities of why intellect and career status and success, so to speak, might actually be hindering your relationships. Number two, if your knowledge and your finances are making you prideful, this actually will keep you single and push men away from you. I have noticed a slight different motivation when it comes to why a woman will be pursuing a career with a lot of energy compared to why the average man is, is pursuing a career with a lot of energy. When the heart's in the right place, a man is pursuing a good career so that he can then have a woman depend on him. He knows this is attractive to women and women want this. So he knows he needs this in order to be able to have a wife and children one day. Now, when it comes to a woman, again, I'm not saying this is bad, but when it comes to a woman, her motivation is not that. She's not getting a career so she can provide for her husband. That's not her motivation. Usually her motivation is, I don't wanna be dependent on a man. I don't wanna get trapped and be abused or uh, manipulated by a man because of money. So therefore, this frees me to not need a man in that way. And to that, I am saying, that's great. I'm not saying it's wrong for a woman to have a career. I'm not. I'm happy we live in a society where women can be financially independent and thus able to leave dating relationships and situations where the man would be manipulative because he's a good provider and the woman would be dependent because our society is you know, unhealthy in that way. My point in saying all this is that women just need to be careful that their acquisition of wealth and education is not then tempting them to have a superior attitude towards men with the negative feeling of, I don't need you. You know, that I'm good, you're, you're not needed anymore. That vibe that women can give off is not good. Your intellect and money will not be an issue for a strong man unless you make it an issue. Number three, if you're assuming that your intelligence and career success is intimidating a man, that probably is keeping you single. First Corinthians 8, one through three, but while knowledge makes us feel important, it is love that strengthens the church. What if a man had this inner belief that kind of leaked out at times where he felt like he was just so handsome that he was just generally intimidating towards most women. What if he said to you, I know I'm extremely handsome and I know some women can be threatened by that. So I hope that isn't an issue for you, 
the fact that he thought that this would be an issue for you would actually be the real issue. Likewise, if you have an inner belief that assumes that this man is threatened by your doctorate degree or your C-level title at your company, and you just feel like he is intimidated by this, that actually is the issue. Your belief that he's intimidated by that is the issue. Ironically, a woman's belief that a man will look down on her because she is so smart and wealthy is sometimes rooted in her tendency to look down on him because of his lack of education or wealth. Number four, if you believe you could never be attracted to a man who is less educated or makes less money than you, then that probably is keeping you single. While some women have a subconscious belief that they could not be attracted to a man who makes less money or is less educated, some women just consciously say that. And it's like, they're very comfortable with it. They'll just say, I can never date a guy who's less educated or makes less money than me. This is called hypergamy, which is the action of marrying or forming a relationship with a person of a superior sociological or educational background. Likewise, when a Christian woman reads her Bible and sees that a, a husband is called to be the leader, Sometimes she makes the flawed assumption that this means the man actually needs to be a better leader than her, more intellectual, more spiritually mature than her. But God's commission for the husband to lead is not rooted in abilities and qualifications. Rather, the role of a husband and wife are both equally important and God has simply delegated them to the man and woman through his design. Skill is not going to matter that much when it comes to a healthy relationship over the decades ahead that you hope to enjoy with your future husband. Character, however, will help in that situation. Skill doesn't stand up to the issues and fires that are going to come against you as a couple. Character does. And number five, if your commitment and involvement in your educational or career goals are hindering you from having the time and energy to be able to fulfill your womanly roles as defined in scripture, then that will keep you single. So again, biblically, it's absolutely not wrong for a woman to have entrepreneurial goals and skills. The Proverbs 31 woman, for example, clearly has income from what she's doing. She is a very good businesswoman. However, as we discussed earlier, the roles of the husband and wife are equally important, but different. Barring some uncommon variable that would prevent the man from working, God has made the man to work for the family and the woman to manage the home life for the family. A man really does wanna be with a woman who can add those things to his life that he cannot do himself. He can do what a man is called to do without you in his life. He cannot, however, have the benefits of a wife for himself and the benefits of a mother for his children unless he marries a woman. Thus, even if good things like educational goals and career goals, those are good things, but if those good things get in the way of you being able to fulfill those other callings in the relationship, then that will keep men away from you. I'm Mark from applygodsword.com and until next time, God bless.